Saturn 1B, quarterly film report number 27, covers progress during the period January, February, March, 1966. During this quarter, with a successful launch of the first Saturn 1B, AS-201, the Saturn 1B program moved from a year of intensive launch vehicle ground testing to flight testing. In early January, the launch escape system for AS-201 was erected atop the Apollo spacecraft, completing erection of the space vehicle on Launch Complex 34, Cape Kennedy. Pre-flight checkout of the vehicle started last quarter, continued as planned. Concurrently, Marshall's contractors were completing the final phases of qualification testing of the flight components. In some instances, Marshall granted component qualification waivers for SA-201 based on previous thorough testing. During early February, several technical meetings were held to evaluate the data from the various pre-launch tests, including the Space Vehicle Countdown Demonstration Test and the Flight Readiness Test. Following two postponements caused by unfavorable weather, final launch preparations were begun. This final countdown was interrupted by two launch vehicle holds, both because of low pressure in the gaseous nitrogen control pressure sphere. Liftoff of the unmanned vehicle occurred on February 26 at 11.12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This liftoff marked the first use of a new flight testing procedure for the Saturn program, the all-up concept, where all stages and modules of the first flight vehicle are live or functioning units. The Chrysler-built first stage and the eight Rocketdyne H1 engines performed well within tolerances. The pressure of the gaseous nitrogen control pressure sphere was as planned during flight. At T plus 141 seconds, the four inboard engines cut off, followed six seconds later by the outboard engines. Within a few seconds, successful stage separation had been achieved and the second stage engine ignited, as shown by a camera mounted in the first stage. Separation disturbances were quite small, with the first stage being very stable. The Douglas-built second stage's overall performance was excellent. This was the first flight test of the stage and its J2 engine. The engine, built by Rocketdyne, is the most powerful liquid hydrogen engine being manufactured. After about 20 seconds of second stage burning, the launch escape tower of the 46,000-pound Apollo spacecraft was jettisoned. The instrument unit, built by IBM, performed precisely as designed commanding the flight of the vehicle through payload separation. This was also the first flight test of the instrument unit, which, like the second stage, will be used with the Saturn V launch vehicle. Ten minutes after liftoff, the second stage engine had completed its job and shut down. At this point, the Apollo spacecraft was 160 miles high, traveling over 15,000 miles per hour. After reaching an apogee of about 300 miles, the spacecraft was propelled back into the Earth's atmosphere by its service module engine to provide an extreme test for the command module's heat shield. The command module was recovered in the South Atlantic by Department of Defense Recovery Forces and returned for detailed study. The complete success of AS-201 in performing its prime missions which included verifying spacecraft and launch vehicle compatibility and launch vehicle structural integrity, provided NASA with increased confidence in meeting its manned space exploration goals as planned. AS-203, now scheduled for launch before AS-202, will not carry an Apollo spacecraft, but rather a lightweight nose cone. This will allow the S-4B to go into orbit with about 10 tons of liquid hydrogen aboard. During the three-orbit mission, the dynamics of liquid hydrogen in space will be studied to gain additional data on the behavior of this fuel under weightless conditions. Such information is needed to perfect the restart of the S-4B in Earth orbit, required for manned lunar exploration.
Booster post-static checkout for SA-203 was completed at Marshall's Michoud Assembly Facility in early March. Preparations for stage shipment are in process. Shipment to the Cape is planned for early April. On the West Coast, Douglas efforts centered around the second stage for SA-203. Due to parts shortages, pre-acceptance firing activities proceeded slowly until the first week in February. Stage power on checkout and LH2 experiment TV system manual checkout was completed by mid-quarter. In late February, two acceptance firings were aborted due to malfunctions in the automatic firing sequence tapes and a small fire in the engine fuel pump area. On February 26th, a 289 second acceptance firing to LOX depletion was successfully completed. Shipment to the Cape is planned for early April. Meanwhile, installation of components in the instrument unit for the second flight vehicle was completed on February 23rd and checkout began the next day. Unit checkout continued throughout the quarter. Shipment to KSC is planned for next quarter. Preparation for shipping the lightweight nose cone was completed in February. The nose cone departed Marshall March 1st and arrived at KSC 10 days later. Following post-static checkout, the booster for the third flight vehicle, SA-202, was shipped from Chrysler's Michoud Assembly Facility to the Cape February 7th. Immediately after launch complex 34 pad refurbishment, the stage was erected on March 4th. At Douglas's SACTO facility, post-static checkout of the second stage was completed January 6th. The stage was shipped from SACTO by ocean vessel January 15th and was offloaded at the Cape January 29th. It was then moved to the vertical assembly building for inspection and storage. The stage was stacked atop the booster March 9th. At IBM Huntsville, instrument unit checkout was completed on February 4th. The unit was barged to the Cape, arriving February 21st. Following pre-erection activities, it was stacked atop the second stage March 11th. Pre-flight checkout of the entire launch vehicle is underway. At the Marshall Systems Development Facility, development and verification of the computer program tapes for automatic checkout of SA-202 was completed in March. At the end of March, the facility was being updated to the SA-203 configuration. At Marshall, the booster for the fourth flight vehicle underwent two successful static firings, the first on January 17th, the second on January 21st. The booster was shipped from Marshall January 28th, 10 days ahead of schedule. Adverse weather and river conditions at Cairo, Illinois prevented further safe transit. The Palaman returned to MSFC February 9th and loaded the instrument unit for the third flight vehicle for simultaneous river shipment to Michou. The barge departed the center February 11th and arrived at MAF February 16th. The stage was subsequently offloaded, then moved to the assembly facility, where post-static checkout began March 31st, ahead of schedule. The instrument unit was transshipped to the barge Promise for shipment to the Cape. Pre-static checkout for the fifth flight booster was completed in early January. It was then prepared for shipment, departing Michoud February 17th and arriving at Marshall February 26th. The stage was immediately installed in the static test stand and Chrysler prepared the stage for acceptance firing. The stage was fired March 23rd and March 31st as scheduled. The stage is now being prepared for shipment to Michoud. Stage assembly of the sixth flight booster was completed this quarter. Pre-static checkout got underway immediately and is scheduled for completion early next quarter. Assembly of the first stage for the seventh flight vehicle started February 2nd and is scheduled for completion next quarter. Fabrication of the eighth flight booster continued throughout the quarter and fabrication of the ninth flight booster got underway. Chrysler continued with component qualification testing of S-1B units throughout the quarter.
At Douglas's Huntington Beach facility, inspection and installation of components in the LH-2 tank for the second stage of the fourth flight vehicle were completed in early January. On January 10th, the stage was shipped aboard the Orion from Seal Beach, arriving at SACTO January 14th. It was installed in Beta-3 test stand upon arrival. Following receiving inspection and modification and installation of late parts, pre-static checks began January 24th. On March 18th, Douglas successfully acceptance fired the stage on the first attempt. The stage is now expected to be ready for delivery well ahead of schedule. Factory checkout for S4B205, shown at right, started this quarter at Douglas. Part shortages temporarily delayed completion of checkout until March 22nd. Following final inspections, it will be shipped to SACTO next quarter. Insulating the second stage of the sixth flight vehicle was completed in January. Miscellaneous horizontal installations, cleaning of the LH-2 tank, joining the thrust structure and forward and aft skirts, and installation of the engine were also completed this quarter. Factory checkout is underway. Joining the forward LH-2 dome to the LH-2 tank for the second stage of the seventh flight vehicle was completed in January. The stage was then subjected to hydrostatic, pneumatic, leak, and dye tests in February. Installation of stage insulation was completed March 10th. Components are now being installed in the stage. The LOX tank and forward LH-2 dome for the second stage of the eighth launch vehicle were shipped from DAC's Santa Monica facility to Huntington Beach early this quarter. Stage assembly progressed at Huntington Beach throughout the quarter. Hydrostatic proof testing of the tanks is scheduled to begin next quarter. Fabrication of the stages for the 9th and 10th launch vehicles was begun. Douglas continued S-4B qualification testing this period, testing of the S-4B common bulkhead test specimen under cryogenic conditions started last quarter, was completed in early January. Although the specimen failed during the latter test phases, data from this test program indicated no problem existed for the flight stages. Other qualification testing included vibration, thermal shock, and functional testing of the S-4B's main fuel feed duct at Douglas's Santa Monica facility, and testing of the S-4B oxidizer duct assembly at Wiley Laboratory, El Segundo, California. At Marshall, structural testing of the second structural test instrument unit, begun December 30th, was completed this quarter. Following a series of successful tests, the unit failed February 2nd. The IU was later broken down into sections for post-test examination. Evaluation of all test data indicated that the instrument unit structure is fully qualified for manned Saturn 1B vehicles. Component installation in the fourth flight instrument unit continued throughout the period, with completion planned for next quarter. Structural segments for the next instrument unit were received this quarter. Assembly started March 5th. Component installation will start next quarter. At Rocket Dyne's Santa Susana facility, J-2 engine qualification service life tests were conducted in early January. The engine was subjected to seven successive full duration, 500 second firings. At Canoga Park, a new facility, an electrical assembly clean room production line has been placed in operation. It will be used in the buildup of electrical control assemblies for the J-2 engine system. Delivery of electrical ground support equipment from General Electric's Daytona Fabrication Facility to KSC was completed at the end of February. This equipment has been installed at Launch Complex 37B, the second of two Saturn 1B launch complexes. Checkout of this equipment is in progress. During March, in connection with the Super Guppy flight test program, a ground test second stage was successfully flown in the Guppy from Huntsville to California. At Marshall's Auxiliary Propulsion System Facility, an APS module was tested on January 26th in the altitude test cell to check out compatibility of the module and facility. This was the first in a series of altitude tests 
using the complete system. In summary, January, February, and March were months of notable achievements and on-schedule deliveries within the Saturn 1B program, including the orderly buildup of Saturn 1B stages and equipment. Delivery of ground support equipment to launch Complex 37B. Increased load capacity in air freight service. And the spectacular and highly successful flight of AS-201. Thank <laughs> you.